So, Helen, your first competitive race back for five years and you win another gold. Congratulations on that. What was that like? Thank you. Yeah, I was really nervous, actually, at the start of the race. I think that no matter what you've done before, and it's been so long since, since you raced before, everything feels a little unfamiliar. So just getting that first race done was really important. And so gold in London, uh, gold in Rio. When did you decide, for goodness sake, that you were going to try Tokyo? Probably not even a year ago. Um, honestly, it was. I kind of had really come to a strong decision by the end of the summer. I think I spent the summer training and thinking about whether it would be possible. So, yeah, probably not even a year ago. And what was it that made you decide... You've got three kids, two of them twins. Um, what made you decide, I'm going to have a go? When did you... Was there a moment in lockdown where you thought, I'm going to give it a go? It was a, it was a really, sh like, slowly but surely process. I started to see my scores coming back. And at the same time, I think... I realised that actually lockdown and the, the pandemic was going to last a lot longer than I originally thought. So I thought, we're going to be at home a lot longer. Um, I'm going to be spending more time on the row machine. Could this be an opportunity? Could this be a way to make it work? And rather letting it work against me, actually it worked for me because I could manage all my family time around training. And so, yeah, it's kind of worked that way. And how has it worked out, the training? I mean, how are you juggling a very young son, twins and training? Well, a lot of it's done at nap time. So I'm as soon as they go down for a nap, I'm straight on the rowing machine. And generally weights, if I'm doing weights at home, the kids join in or I'm reading stories between sets. And it looks entirely different to the setup that I had pre-London and pre-Rio. But um, I always think if I'm, if I'm the best mum I can be first, that allows me to be the best rower I can be. And I think definitely taking that onto the water when I do get to go and train on the water as well, I think that I just manage to kind of compartmentalise the parts of my life. But rowers always seem to get up at dawn, you know, like five o'clock in the morning. But then so do young kids. So how are, you, how are you managing that? Well, I wake up with the kids first and I, have a, I actually have a couple of hours with them in the morning through the early hours. And that's really, really nice. And then I get to, to leave the house a little bit later than I used to. So a lot of my training schedule is just done around them. It's done around them and their schedule. And um, I'm really grateful that Polly, my, my rowing partner, has just been totally flexible about letting that happen. I gather you've been breastfeeding while you're training... Well, not while you're training, obviously, but, I mean, in between training sessions. Yeah, and especially when I first came back to training and le leaving the house for the first time, that was a big thing. I was kind of, you know, trying to get back in time for feeds and things like that. But um, and I'm quite a disorganised person by nature, so suddenly I had to really ramp up my organisation just to make sure everything was running smoothly. And I saw in a... I think it was a diary that you did, this quote, and you said, I was looking at my little girl and thought, in 20 years, when you're making your decisions about your life, what can I physically show you about who you can be and the chances you can take? I found that very moving. Oh, thank you. And I, and I do see it as a chance. You know, there's no guarantees that I'm going to... That I'm going to make it in this journey. There's no guarantees I'm going to make the team, but I really think the bravest step is trying. And I would love to think that even if she's 14 months old now, even if she doesn't remember it, she'll know she was there and she'll know the story. And I'd love to think that gave her a boost or this kind of underlying sense of possibility. And it started out, yeah, it started out largely for my children and particularly for my daughter, but the, the surge of amazing, amazing, not only well wishes, but messages of people saying that this story has inspired them to try something or to go back and do something they once loved before and haven't done for years. And um, that has really hit me in a way that I never, I never imagined before when training for London and Rio felt like such a personal journey and a personal goal. This feels like there's um, a, a huge community of people who have kind of taken this story and really helped it change their lives. And it just that just motivates me more than anything. Well, it's a wonderful story. And is there a sense, too, that you're doing it for other mums? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think that mums can be so supportive of each other, and that's just incredible. The first person, or one of the first people that I phoned when I was thinking about coming back was Anna Watkins. She won gold in London and attempted to come back after having children. And although she didn't quite make the Olympic team, she's the one that, you know, has all the advice for me. And if I don't make the team, I want to be the person that someone can call and, you know, offer advice to them. And I think that supporting each other is one of the, the best things we can do. And when... Will you know if you've made the team? How does all that happen? 
Well, I think over the next few weeks, there may be the final kind of decisions, the final rounds of testing. So I'm just trying to keep myself really fit and healthy. So if ever I'm tested over the next few weeks, I can show what I can do. And then I think, I guess over the next month, I think those final decisions will be made. So it's, it's a little bit stressful at training at the moment. So in a way, I suppose the delay of the Olympics um, sort of played into your hands a bit. Yeah, if, if the Olympics hadn't been delayed, I would be watching from my sofa. There's no, there's no possible way at time scale. So it's... Yeah, it's, it's totally changed everything for me this year. I just wanted to make sure that this year I came out the end of it having, I don't know, having achieved something, having done something that I never thought possible. So, I mean, come on, dare to dream. What would a, what would a third Olympic gold mean to you? I mean, I, I genuinely, hand on heart, don't really think about the gold at the moment because... I'm, I'm thinking about selection. I'm thinking about making it there. This time last year, I was I was not even a rower, let alone thinking about the Olympics. So that's that's a little bit beyond my thinking at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, the next few months, you're just going to carry on training and put in the hard yards, I guess. Yeah, we have a hundred days to go, and I think that the one thing I don't want to lose sight of is the fact that from the beginning, I said um, I want to be the best mum I can be, and I'll fit the rowing around that. And I actually think that's made me the best rower I can be. Because if I feel like I've done a good job at home and a good job as a mum, I, I go to training just fully excited to be there and knowing that, um, that I've got the balance right. Yeah, well, that's a great thought to end on. Thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate your time and uh, look, the best of luck. And good luck with the kids as well. Thanks. <laughs>